Why is it always so crooked? Like, whatever I do. Oof. Hello there! Viewers, today I will be showing you my corset collection. Corset? Is that how you pronounce it? Never mind. It's not like I have a thousand of them. I literally have a couple of corsets, majority of which are unusable. <laughs> but I think corsets are something that when you start out with costumes or like when you get interested in the history of fashion, you're kind of like, I want to own a corset, because that was my case. I was literally like, can I try it on somewhere? And you know, I would run around like costume rentals and I would be like, do you have any corsets? And they would be like, sure we do. And they would give me those like long line bras and I would be like, thanks. But no, that's not what I mean. I mean like real corsets with like boning and busks and lacing and basically what really irks me is that online anything with some kind of lacing on it is considered a corset so like if you have a blouse that's like strapless and it laces at the back or at the front it's kind of considered a corset and I'm like have you even seen one because that's not what a corset is <laughs> But anyway, I will probably need to change because you won't be able to see the corset if I'm wearing this because it's kind of dark. I'm going to try and get something white. Okay, so now that I have changed into this beautiful nightgown that I got secondhand and it's made of polyester or something, I may need to zoom out a bit and I'll start showing you my corset. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the only one that I have ordered at a corset maker. That was the first historical corset she made. Since then she's made tens of, of courses like that. That was both a challenge for me and it was for, for her because it was the first corset I was ordering ever, but also it was the first historical corset that she was about to make. I mean, I think it, it was the second one, but it was the first one that followed the, this kind of silhouette. So this is it. It's also kind of my favorite. So I'm spoiling, I'm spoiling the best bit for the very beginning. As you can see, it's like very sturdy. It's made of, I think, at least two layers of really thick cotton. It has beautiful embroidery, which the corset maker um, made. I will link her in the description because it's really really pretty. As I said it's really sturdy but because I ordered it back when I had no idea about corsets or how to take care of them or anything, some bits are a bit uh, messed up like this bit here, the boning keeps turning around and it pokes my armpit. I think that's solely because I used to wear it too much and also I think it was after like five years of wearing... Hello! <laughs> the boning started to poke through uh, the lower bit here, but I think that's solely because of my incompetence rather than the corset maker's mistake. Another thing is, I think, I'm not sure, but I think back back in 2013 or 14 when I ordered it, my boobs are, were a bit bigger, <laughs> and so the, the cups are actually way too big right now, and because I used this corset, in a movie and an actress were, was wearing it and it was also a bit too big. I had to like do this on set so I had to like join in the cups uh, together which is definitely not how you're supposed to make the cups smaller but that was kind of last minute addition and I kept it this way because it fits better though I know it kind of hurts the corset and you're not supposed to do this but anyway here it is! It has a beautiful shape it closes with a busk and because we couldn't find a busk that's long enough, the corset maker suggested that we add um, a lacing on top of it. The busk ends up kind of here and here is where the lacing starts. Now that's another thing that kind of doesn't always work out because sometimes if I don't lace myself enough, the lacing kind of goes this way and it pokes through the dress, so I'm not super happy with the lacing solution. But the, again, that was my choice. So obviously you can see some wrinkles and stuff, that's because I didn't know how to care for a corset properly in the first place, and also because it's quite old, I think it has at least, uh, I think it's like five years old by now and I used to wear it a lot. The good thing is the embroidery didn't, didn't fade or, you know, nothing happened to it, so it's still beautiful. Do you want to try corset on? How about that? Gorgeous! Gorgeous! Oh my god! Oh my! Oh look at this! Look at that corset! <laughs> Basically that's the way you put most of the corsets. So you unlace the back, close the front, and then lace it. Okay, so this 
is it. Um, as you can see, the cups are kind of lamely reduced by my awkward hand seams, so it's not actually supposed to look like that. But you can see it's quite high, like it covers most of the bust, and here it also goes all the way onto the hips. Okay, so I'm gonna tie it. Uh, what you do is you have like two little loops that you just pull, and I'm not gonna do it on camera because internet is full of perverted weirdos, so I'm just gonna show you what it looks like when it's actually laced properly. Okay, so um, I have it laced properly right now, and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it gives you like a pretty good reduction. Even though my waist size actually isn't smaller, like if you measure it, it's pretty much the same, but you can see the... <laughs> it's kind of like the flesh went into like different points of my body, so like, like the fat from my waist kind of went downwards and that's what creates this illusion of like tiny waist and also you can see like this dimension here is suddenly wider it's it's kind of like it squeezes you this way so all the fat goes that way if that makes sense I'm gonna show you the back as well wiggle 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 so as you can see there's a lot of wrinkles and that's actually my fault because I had no idea what seasoning was back when I bought the corset and when you buy a new corset or like when you order one it's crucial that you season it before you like try and lace it as hard as you can because that kind of pulls the fabric and it can basically ruin it so that's something I didn't know as I said it's the prettiest one I actually own and I've worn it so many times, obviously underneath the costume, it's not the one I would wear outside, which is kind of sad because it's actually really pretty, but I don't really feel like wearing a corset on top of my clothes. So this is the one I use when I kind of need a really good waist reduction and my own corsets, like my other corsets, won't really do that. It's supposed to be like 1840s, 1850s, because back when I ordered it, I was obsessed and I still actually am with Jane Eyre and Brontes and I was like, I need the Victorian corset, so that's what I ordered and because it's the best one I have, I actually, I wore it with like 1890s uh, costumes, 1880s, 1870s I think as well, which I actually shouldn't do because the silhouettes of different decades are completely different from, from one another as I showed you in this little video, so that's something I actually shouldn't be doing, but because it gives me a very good reduction, I keep doing it. But what I should actually do is get courses that fit me as well as this one from different decades, but that hasn't happened so far because I can't afford it and I, I, I'm not confident enough to make my own courses because I'm gonna show you what happens when I do. So, so far this one is my absolute favorite. You can check out the corset maker in the description and she also does international orders, I think. So check her out, she's super sweet and she's really good at what she does. Okay, I need to take this off now because I <laughs> laced it all the way and I kind of can't breathe. Whew, okay. So next up we have a corset that I made myself and um, it was the first corset I think it was the first Victorian corset I made and the reason it sucks is because what I did is I printed out the pattern and then I basically uh, because I had some troubles with positioning the tunnels where you put the boning in what I did was I just put the paper on the fabric and I basically sewed on the paper and then I would just tear it out but what I did know is that because obviously I had to print the pattern twice to sort of do it twice on two halves of the corset but what I didn't know is that one half was actually scaled bigger so <laughs> what happened was I ended up with having like two pieces of like two sides of a corset where one was like way smaller and the other one was just bigger and I was like do I feel like doing this again no let me just cut the one that's bigger to a smaller size so uh, that's what I did and that was a perfect waste of good fabric but I just left it like that because I felt like I'm not gonna get anything better you know thinking back that was a very stupid decision but but I did it and well it, it kind of it, it works just fine but I know it could be way way better when it comes to like giving me the proper silhouette this one was supposed to be 1880s so let me show you what it looks like so because I was so impressed with the corset makers work I wanted to have some embroidery as well so I was like I'm gonna add some fancy trimming and I'm gonna do 
some embroidery that I've never done in my life before. So what happened was, obviously I didn't bother to, to use the right thread, so I used white thread and brown lining, and then for the... what's it called? Yeah, um, I had a silver one, so I just used a silver one, because why would I bother finding a pink one or a brown one that would actually match? But no, no, I just used, from what I can see, I even used blue thread for the pink trimming. That's how, I, how much I didn't care about this. What I like about this corset is definitely the fabric. It gives you this kind of like authentic feel. Okay, so here it is. Um, as you can see, it doesn't do much. It definitely nothing compared to the one I just showed you. The waist reduction is almost non-existent, it's kind of like a tube to be honest, and that's not what it was supposed to be, and also you can see it's way too small because the lacing at the back doesn't close like almost at all, like almost all of my back is the lacing and it's not what it was supposed to look like. So basically I think it looks well uh, enough but it definitely doesn't give me the proper silhouette for like 1880s bustle dress. What it does nice is it gives me like a proper bust support, so like if you look from the from the side, the bust kind of forms itself a night, night, bah, in a nice way, but otherwise than that, you know, you can see a gap here that's not supposed to be here. It's crooked because one side is bigger obviously, and the silhouette is kind of very uh, smooth and in the 1880s it, it's supposed to be like much more hourglass in this, so definitely not my best. Oh, okay, moving on. Now this one is definitely the worst one I have ever done. It's also the first one I have ever done. I was like, okay, I know for a proper silhouette I really need a corset, but I don't know how to make one and there is no way I can do that and I can't afford, you know, ordering one and I wouldn't even know who makes historical corsets because I didn't know about um, corsets and romans back then, so I was like, what I could do though is I could buy a modern one and make it look old and like kind of alter it. So what I did, like behold, because this is priceless, I bought a red leather overbust and I made it into a Belle Epoque S-Bend corset. So what I did is, let me remind you, that was back when I had no idea about sewing, I had no idea about corsetry. I mean, it's not like I know much now, but at least I know not to do this. So what happened is you have the insides of the red leather corset here and then over it there is like a layer of <laughs> white yellow cotton. Thinking about it now I wouldn't even know how to do that. Like how did I even, like how did I come up with it? I cut those pieces here and added some bust gores and then what I did was I lengthened it so like the actual corset finishes here. I added hip gores, I added the waist tape, which is actually like a Christmas ribbon. This is how bad it was. Uh, what's funny though, it actually gives you a pretty good silhouette. The only problem is that it's awfully done and also the back of it doesn't look very good because there is like this weird bulk. I don't know, I'm just gonna show it to you. Okay, so here it is. Here is what it looks like. And I think what's what's amazing, and I have no idea how I did this, is that it actually does push me forward. So it does kind of give me this S-band silhouette. Um, if you look at it from the side, you can see my front is kind of like straight and then this bit here is like, ugh. What's sad about this corset is that the front looks all right and then the back is horrendous. And I'm gonna show it to you because I'm being, being honest with you and I'm not pretending this is a good corset. It's not. First of all, you can see all the wrinkles made by badly done hip gores and stuff. And then here, woohoo! Check that out. This is um, horrendous. So what happened was it's slightly too big for me and I didn't know that at the time and I didn't feel like there was anything I should do. So I just left it like that and um, yeah, it's really bad. This is all wrinkly. There should be some boning here which is non-existent. This is a bit too long and it's like flying around for no reason. So the waist reduction in here is actually not too bad because I did it knowing where my actual waist was. Here is another one and let me just tell you that the state of it is very bad because I made it of a satin ribbon and the ribbon started to shred and it also seems like I actually haven't finished it. 
The reason is because it's also one of my first corsets because when I was looking into making corsets I was like, okay, so what's the easiest one I can do? And I found found out about ribbon corsets. So like ribbon corsets were corsets worn in early Edwardian era where uh, women would want to be like more flexible and like could do sports so they would wear like those short like underbust cor corsets. Kind of looks like uh, someone like ate it and then threw, threw up and yeah, it's not the best. Also, the thing is I didn't know where to get a busk because I had no idea what it's called in Polish because that was early like 2013 where, when I had no idea about um, historical fashion so I was just like reading foreign historical blogs and like finding out about things and so instead it's close to the front which makes it really hard to put on because I need to undo the lacing. Okay so this is what it looks like. As you can see it's an underbust so it doesn't actually do anything to my boobs um, and also it doesn't do much to my waist either. I think it would look okay as sort of like an over corset that you would wear with like a nice Edwardian dress but oh my stomach just went wild. I don't know if you if you know that guys but I can do this magic trick where I move my diaphragm and my stomach is, just starts growling so let me just show it to you. Check this out. Anyway, so this is what a corset looks like. It's way too tight here at the hips. Doesn't do much to my waist because it keeps pressing here and that's not where my waist is. And it's also too big. And it also, it's like, it's all shredding. It's just dying. The reason I'm showing it is because it's, it's one of the first one I've ever done. I've never worn it after that. Oh no, there is a knot at the back of my corset. Am I ever gonna get out? Now what I also have is I have some cheap corsets I bought online, not for myself, but for my actresses in the pure dramas I've done. And they are pretty crap, but I'm just gonna show you so you know that they don't do anything good to you. So this one is probably the most period looking that I could ever find on eBay or like online because it's bright, it's not black and it's not like black and red with red lace so it's the, the least horish looking out there but it also doesn't do much like I'm gonna show you okay so it's a bit too big for me actually I think basically um, this is what it looks like like it doesn't do anything to you, it doesn't make you look okay it's, it's way too big for me because it closes all the way but I think even if it was smaller it would only go just like that so it doesn't give you the proper silhouette, it doesn't do anything but I bought it because I've noticed you can always tell the difference when an actress is not wearing um, a corset mainly because of the breasts because as you can see they're kind of like flattened and they're made into this like weird shape so I thought if it doesn't do anything to their waist it might um, help with silhouette so I bought these for the actresses mainly for this purpose and also because it kind of helped them get in the role and like feel the era and stuff so I wouldn't recommend it if you're trying to get an authentic like shape or silhouette but if you're starting out and you have no idea how to make corsets or like you can't afford one like a good one you could definitely get one of those because I think it's better to have one of those than to not have a corset at all um, because it always kind of like stiffens the silhouette you know it does have a boning it's kind of like a solid 5 out of 10 then I have this one which I bought for a different period drama and I was like I don't care what it looks like because it's gonna be underneath the clothes but it needs to give the right silhouette so I spent hours searching for like cheap corsets or like cheaper than made to measure corsets that actually have a tiny bit of shape so I found this one. I bought it at Corset Story, which is a crappy shop, like net, let's be honest. Kind of one of those shops that take people's money where someone's interested in corsets but they don't do any modeling to your body at all. They're just kind of like tubes. They're just kind of there. But I was like, I need a corset and I need cheap, so I bought this one. And I think what it does very nicely is that it it gives, um, because it's like a solid overbust, like it goes way uh, over your boobs. I think it gives a nice shape. Bust wise it may not do much to your waist. So what I don't really like about it is because my waist is quite low and this one is apparently for someone shorter it slides up really high and it ends up right at my armpit. It's like really high around the armpits. Okay so this is what this one does. It sort of has like a very delicate modeling around the waist and the hips. I quite like the heart shaped top but 
It's also not ideal. I think for period costumes you would need something way more um, dramatic than that. It's made of a nice um, fabric though. I don't know what that is, but it seems quite sturdy and the boning is also quite sturdy. I was trying to wear it with historical costumes, but because of the really high overbust, it didn't really work because the shape was kind of odd. As you can see, it's kind of a bit too modern. This was the best one they had because it was one of the most expensive on the site and it was, it's, it's just really sturdy, but the other ones are kind of like steampunky Chinese. And also you shouldn't trust the photos on the website. You should always check with um, either people reviewing corsets like Lucy corsetry on YouTube, mainly because the photos are photoshopped and they don't actually show you what the corsets do to your body, which is not much. I also had my Regency era corset, which is quite crap and I've showed it to you before in my get ready with me video so why don't you go there and watch it if you if you're dying to see it and another one I wanted to show you is the one I haven't actually finished I'm still working on it it's a 1780 styles corset aka stays. It's lace both at the back and at the front. It was supposed to be convenient, it's actually pretty annoying because you have to undo it every time you put it on. I'm quite happy with it. It's a bit of a mess right now but it does have a lining which I'm very proud of. It does have plastic boning inside. <laughs> Am I a chicken? Alright so this is it. After I made it I realized I should have added another like hole here so I could lace it up properly um, but I didn't do it so right now it's kind of like take what you want it could give a better silhouette if I I need to change something here so then I get a more like conical silhouette if that makes sense but it's not too bad it's almost the right length though it's a bit too short so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to go all the way around. Right now I didn't really feel like doing it because it's super time consuming. I only did this bit here. It should actually be like this. So that that's what I need to improve. Okay, so this is mostly it. I do own at least one more corset that I don't have here with me at the moment, but it's nothing to look at, believe me. The thing is, I'm not a seamstress and I'm not a corset maker, and I learn very slowly when it comes to sewing, so obviously these are kind of crappy, and also because I think I was trying to make corsets back when I thought I could do it, which was a couple of years ago, that's why they're all crap, because that was right at the beginning when I started sewing and stuff so now I kind of know that's not really my thing this one is like the latest one that I have done and I think I've done it two years ago so kind of gives you some ideas like what to do if you don't really have enough money to pay for like really good reproductions or have some made for you this is also an option like these are some these are just the things I have <laughs> what am I even talking about so yeah that's my corset collection I need a break, but most importantly I need to eat something.